We can tell this is a bar graph and not a histogram because on the bottom here what we have are categories and um, also because there are these gaps between each category, which is okay in a bar graph. You don't need them, but you can have them. It doesn't really matter because in a histogram, what you would see down here aren't so much as categories as ranges of numbers. Um, so that's a big difference between bar graphs and histograms. Now here's a pretty typical problem, and we've got number of students here and the types of instruments they're playing. And the question is, what's is the probability that she plays a stringed instrument? So, um, here's the string instruments right here. And to find the probability that she'll be playing that instrument, we should take the number of people who play stringed out of all the people. And that play all the instruments. So, in other words, all the people that are in these categories. So, I'm going to write the numbers above each bar for myself to get a sense of how many people are in each group. So 6 and 4 is 10, 14 and 18 is 22, so there are 32 people. And we know our denominator is going to be 32. Let's look at our choices. We know that A and B are out. Uh, the reason they probably threw A and B in there is because some people would tend to not include the stringed instruments uh, when they're counting everybody. It, almost as if it's a comparison where the number of people who are playing stringed versus the number of people who are playing other instruments. That's not the case of probability. We want all the people in the denominator. Next, just put the number of people who play the stringed instrument up top, and that's what we have right here. So to read a bar graph, you just look at the vertical value and how it corresponds to a certain instrument. Um, this is called a frequency table. And I understand that at first, sometimes it can be confusing to think about what they're trying to say here, but what we are saying is that there are, these are tally marks, and if, you know, remember tally, this is one, two, three, four, and then the five has that diagonal line. So this is ten people who had a dog, five had a cat, three had fish, two had none, and they want you to, to connect the frequency table to a circle graph, and they're asking which one connects the best to this data. Well, look, A is out, because not everyone owned the same amount, and that's what you're seeing here. You see one piece for dog, piece for non, fish, cat, and they're all the same. Now, when you're eliminating, notice the dogs should be the most. In fact, they should be twice as many as the cats. So let's look at our choices and realize that this doesn't fit because a dog, although it's larger than cat, is still about the same size. There should be the most dogs. Now, this one looks like the best bet because there are half as many cats as dogs. Let's just check the fish and none. Now, this is an estimate. Fish, it should be a little bit more, three and two. And that makes sense. Three, three fish, two none. This piece is five, which is half the piece size of a piece for dogs. So this is our answer. Notice I estimated here, but I, I chose a number to stick with. I, I started with the dogs. It was the largest value and saw that, first of all, this can't be it because not every category was equal. This can't be it because there are more dogs and cats. And if you look at these two pieces right here, they're the same size. And this can't be it either because there are twice as many dogs as cats. And this piece, this cat piece right here, it's got to be about one-third of that dog piece, so it's out. So process of elimination becomes really important. Um, here it's a little bit of a reverse where we're given another form of a frequency table, the grade and the number of students in each grade. And they want to know which of these graphs display this information the best way. Now, th again, these are bar graphs because at the bottom we have categories, number, gr number grades. And let's just pick out that the seventh should be higher than all the others. I don't need to memorize this exactly 37, not yet. I just need to know that it's higher than the others. So if we look at our choices, um, A and B are out because there aren't more sixth and seventh graders. Next thing I'm going to look at, you know, I'm using the range here, uh, is that the fifth graders should be the least amount, and that there should be 18 of them. So if we look at our graphs, we have our answer already. It's got to be B because if you look at the fifth, they're at about 18, whereas here they're above 20. So the answer is B. And notice I didn't need any details really, except for the fact that the seventh grade had the highest value and the fifth grade had 18 people. I never even bothered to look at that sixth and eighth had 24 and 21. That will save time. Here we have a line graph and <coughs> we have these temperatures. And again, they want us to connect the graph 
to the table. And I'm going to notice that February should be the coldest and April should be the highest. So if we look at this, this is out. February is too high right here. This is out. February should be the lowest. This is okay. February is the lowest. And April should be the highest. Um, this one can't be it because April is lower than the March. So our answer is this. And notice I didn't need many details here except to know what the highest and lowest are. The range, which is just the highest minus the lowest, is a very useful tool. So here we have a circle graph and we're given numbers here and they want to know what's the percent of t-shirts that are red. Well there are nine red t-shirts and if we add all these up 15 plus 2 is 17 plus 19 is 26 plus 4 and 6 is another 10 so it's 9 out of 36. 9 out of 36 is a very nice percent and we can see that if we reduce it. 9 divided by 9 is 1 and 36 divided by 9 is 4. It's 1 fourth. What is 1 fourth as a percent? 1 fourth equals something out of 100 and that is 25 I think because 4 times 25 is 100 so 1 times 25 is x. So our percent is 25 percent. I think about it this way if we have 1 going into 4 4 times, 25 goes into 100 tw 4 times, so 25 over 100, that's 25%, that's our answer. Um, here is another uh, frequency table, and we're saying that Debbie, this person Debbie, expected each number of the cube to appear, and appear an equal number of times. Now, she saw a six-sided six -sided die, she rolled it a bunch of times, and she thought everything would be even. Each number would turn up the same amount of times because each number has an equal probability of landing. However, that's not what happened. Um, we should just notice before we count exactly that three happened the most. And five happened the least. So let's look at the comparison statements here. And which best compares the result of Debbie's roles with her ex expectations? So basically, we want to compare what she expected, which was that they should each happen the same number of times, and, and to what actually happened. And they even give us up here that she rolled the die 60 times. So if she rolled it 60 times, and each number should get the same, her expectation was that each number roll 10 times, right? Six numbers, 10 times each, for each number. So did she roll more fives than she expected? No, because she rolled three, and she expected ten. So she expected more, that's out. Did she roll fewer fours than expected? Absolutely. Um, oh, excuse me. No. This is five, ten, eleven. She expected ten, so she rolled more than she expected. She rolled more threes than expected. That is true. Here she rolls eighteen threes. That's more than ten she expected. And that's our answer. And just to be very careful, look at the last one. Debbie rolled fewer twos than expected. That's not true. She rolled 15 and she only expected 10. So our answer is C. Here's what's called a pictograph. And the, the key here is that this fishy equals five fish. And in fact, often they should do this. They should say, if you see a half fish, they should say that equals 2.5. But they don't, so we have to estimate. So what is the total number of fish sold Tuesday and Wednesday? So here's our two days. On Tuesday, there are 5, 10. Well, what I'm going to do is a shortcut. Just combining Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm going to combine these two halves to make a whole. So it's 5, 10, 15, 25, 35, 45, 50. That's our answer. So when you read a pictograph, it's very similar to a histogram. You read the values right here using the key to tell you what happened on each moment. Bar graphs, which is right here. Same idea as a single bar graph, except Here's our categories in the bottom. In each category, there are two groups. So you could ask the question, uh, how many uh, people age 14 did not work? Well, look at the key. This color right here indicates that they did work. This color indicates they did not. And notice we clump them together because they're in the same category. This line graph is called a double line graph, very similar to a single line graph, and except that there are two lines. And they're color-coded. This actually represents the same data as the double bar graph does, um, except in a different format, where this line, the pink line, is those who did not work, and here's those who do. And I could ask you at any age, 
how many worked and how many didn't. At 17, how many didn't work, how many did. And you could look for trends here, one being that as the ages go up, more people work, and as the ages go up, um, more less people do not work. And those are the kinds of things you can think about. When you have a double line graph, you're really looking at two categories for every group.